Tell me, pretty baby. Tell me so. Yeah, so this is where I met Fred Davis. I was working a summer job. It was a company called the Harco Corporation. My father was the vice president. And he got me a summer job. I think he had the idea that I was going to go into the business or something and start at the bottom. And bottom, at the bottom was working in the shop. And it was heavy labor, picking up big bags for a complicated industrial process. And Fred was one of the guys there. And they would play music on the radio. And music in 1968, 69 in Cleveland meant soul music, blues. And I would start singing along and they'd be playing blues three o'clock in the morning, Bobby Blue Bland. And they started laughing at me. And then they'd say, well, you got to talk to Fred. He knows all about this blues shit. I did. And I learned that he was a musician, that he was from Kansas City. I started bringing him my guitar and saying, would he show me stuff? And he did. Taught me how to play. And I decided I was going to try to help him restore his music career. And that's what led to the recording that Coal Mine Records is now putting out. I've been playing for some years. I met David and them in the park, him and Larry Greyhouse. And Dave said, uh, Marvin, like, he said, come on over here and play with us. I said, okay. I went over there and I played with him. He said, if something happened to me, so he take over the band, which I did. Do you have any idea how long they had been together before you joined them? Uh, he said they were, they were just getting together and they needed some help. So I sit in with him, and he said, "You, he said, you, he said, hey man, he said, don't leave us. Yeah, so I used to visit Fred, who would stay with his, he called his old lady, Bertha, and she lived here on Utica Avenue in Cleveland. She had a great job. She was a test cook in the Stouffer's Test Kitchen, making TV dinners. And, uh, you know, they were very serious about each other. We'd come over, and uh, she'd cook dinner, because she was a good cook, and they would sing together. What a difference a day makes, Dinah Washington. But she wasn't wild on his music career. She wanted him to get a factory job, make a living, move to the suburbs. So there's a little tension about that. But this is Utica Avenue, Cleveland, East Side. I'd visit Fred Davis here with his old lady Bertha, listen to them play music and sing together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How would you describe Fred Davis as a guitar player? Oh, wow, he was good. He was good. He was very good. He, we we got together a lot of times. And matter of fact, we rehearsed up here in this apartment. He was like he sounded like Freddie King. And, and he could play and jazzier he, things too. Yes, he? yes, he could. Yes, he could. He was a jazzy man. <laughs> Fred Davis to hear 1767 Beaconwood Road, South Euclid, Ohio, where my parents lived, to record him with a local band, high school band, the Blues Renaissance. And they backed him up, and we recorded in the living room here. Fred Davis on the piano, Steve Langer in the Blues Renaissance backing him up. All happened right here. Killed. I was working at the Galleria, and the girl called me from over to to uh, the hospital. She said, "Dave, Davis, 
want to speak to Marvin Braxton. I said, well, I'm dealing with her. I called Marie and told her, I'm going over to the hospital to see my dad. When I go over there, he passed. And they, they robbed him. They took all his money and, and shot him six times. Dave Davis was an honor to be with. 